Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome you to the next class on the inorganic chemistry of life uh, principles and perspectives. In the previous class we have been talking about the ion transport phenomena uh, in terms of variety of things like uniport, symport, antiport. We also have seen certain ion transport will change the potential, certain ions transport will not change because one ion is going in one direction, other ion is going in other direction having the same charge etc. Sometimes when it is a H plus then the pH variation will happen. So, these are all and we also have seen an example in E. coli how so many different kinds of transports are coupled together. So, how complicated is the ion transport process even for a simple uh, being like an E. coli. Okay. So, how do we understand such a phenomena by taking an example. So, take an example of one of the peptides which is involved in ion transport is gravicide. Gravicidin as you can see from this picture there is uh, 15 uh, amino acids are there okay, as you can see some leucines, some uh, tryptophan, some phenylalanine, some tyrosines all kinds of things are there it is a uh, 15 amino acid residue. So, it is a kind of a small peptide not a huge protein small peptide. Even this peptide I have taught you earlier primary sequence that is this one secondary uh, structure tertiary structure etc. If you take those things into consideration you can see that this particular uh, uh, peptide takes a kind of a turn like this, this which is nothing but the helical turn. So, you form a helix kind of a structure here you can see that this is the structure of the gravicide in A with a helical structure having the same peptide sequence. Now, if this goes and sits inside a membrane you see this uh, head portion tail head and tail this is lipid and this is two so lipid bilayer. So, lipid bilayers are typically the uh, membranes. So, if you insert this gravicide into this you can see that green one with the helical. So, you can nicely see that this is very well very well uh, you know inserted into this now form a kind of a barrel. So, there is a barrel it is not of course, the simple uh, kind of thing you have a lot of residues interacting with various things etc. That will allow the ions to flow through this. So, what is the mechanism? A protein will form a kind of helical structure. This helical structure will span across the two ends of the membrane on one end which is outside other end which is inside. So, it is spanning across and then forming this helix as like a kind of a you or uh, pushing a, a tube through through uh, certain uh, kind of a uh, material that is kind of thing. So, you have so this is a tube formed by the protein ok. So, therefore, the protein obviously is having amino acid lining. So, therefore, therefore you have some amino acid base kind of interactions inside. So, this is used for ion transport. So, now we got one idea as how these would do it ok which we did not have earlier, but how peptide. Even proteins there are bigger size proteins than the peptides uh, what we have seen gravicidin these are called porins these are nothing but uh, transport uh, they form ion transport channels. Some of these also form gated ion transport channels I will tell you just in a while. So, this porin peptide uh, polypeptide or a protein you see it has so many uh, kind of helices other things and this will get basically inserted you see this and when it is fully inserted you can see all of them. It is not one uh, part this is one part this is another part this is another part whole thing coming from this. And the gated means that you have uh, allowing in not allowing in in and out to a check and that kind of things are gated channels and the gate will open under certain conditions gate will close be closed under certain conditions. So, keeping that aside you can see the porins also do the same kind of thing as this has done gravicidin. In this case only one peptide, so one barrel only 
and in case of uh, porins not one barrel 1 2 3 4 5 these may be used for different ion these may be used for uh, same ion different concentrations variety of things we are not taking the uh, details of that at this stage because which is out of focus for that. How do you know that these are forming phone channels? So, there are some molecules shown over here these are the molecules and if you add these molecules to this the ion transport will stop and if you remove these molecules ion transport will go. So, that means these barrels having the ion transport property and those barrels are filled by these ones in other words blocked by these molecules and these are basically called as the neurotoxins. So, those which prevent the ion transport is the neurotoxins. Now, we understand. So, ion transport then how a peptide can do, how a big protein can do. We have learned all this in very general way. Now, let us come to some uh, ionophores, uh, biological, biologically important ionophores. So, uh, you have seen earlier in this case the ions are flowing through this. So, it is called channel type. If the ion uh, goes in a straight away without such channels for example, some of these ions here uh, for example, potassium ion by the digericin or valinomycin they are sequestered by this valinomycin taken in taken out in this case it is taken out. So, this kind of thing is not called a channel this is the what is a channel kind of mechanism another is the uh, chelation or uh, the carrier kind of a mechanism. So, it chelates binds and takes it out. So, one is carrier type other is the channel type. Now, so small molecules having different binding sites can bind to the metal ion and wrap around the metal ion and take across the uh, membrane those things are referred as a carrier. And if the carrier uh, molecule is a peptide or protein it forms a kind of a channel and channel is uh, placed across the membrane and therefore, the pro ions are transported across the membrane through the channel. So, that is called channel kind of mechanism. Is that clear? Carrier mechanism, channel mechanism. I hope you understand. In the carrier you have an ion, you have a molecule, molecule sequesters and the whole thing as a complex goes up, goes into the cell or out of the cell. In the other case the molecule forms a spiral and uh, spans across the membrane and then forms a uh, tube like structure through which the ions will flow from in to out, out to in whatever be the mechanism is. This is all called channel mechanism. So, carrier mechanism and channel mechanism. So, ionophores like ionomycin dicarboxylate. So, these were small molecular, but these are all biologically important ones, biologically relevant ones too. And this is calcium 2 plus, what is the mode? It is a carrier type. Dianomycin, it is a it is a no selectivity between the potassium and sodium, it will be all right, and that is a again carrier mechanism. Monensin, it will be for sodium plus and H plus, but not potassium plus is a carrier. So, you can see the selectivity here, monensin. So, that molecule is is a is a natural antibiotic and the nature has synthesized in such a way that it can only bind to sodium plus and not H plus. We will study why is like that in a while uh, as we continue this particular uh, topic on ion transport. Nigericin, potassium and H plus but not sodium plus. So, monensis is selective for sodium, nigericin is selective for potassium. The same can do uh, the H plus in the reverse direction too. Lacelucin is a calcium carrier. So, some other antibiotic is as a number, do not worry, it is a potassium. Another antibiotic is a calcium. Okay. A hexadepsipeptide, not a peptide, depsipeptide as a calcium, which is a carrier. Then valinomycin, which is very well known to many people, is a cyclic peptide, is a potassium, is a carrier. Dunactin is a macro, macro tetraline, I will show some of the structures soon, uh, is a carrier. And adiotin, it is another cycl uh, cyclohexadepsipeptide, potassium channel. Gramicide, it can be M. Plus. There are some uh, uh, peptides, trichotoxin, this can form a channel, alamethacin, it can form a channel, sujukacillin, it can form a channel. So, these are gramicide, these are all channel kind of a systems, so channel mechanism, all other ones are carrier mechanism. In a carrier, the ion is bonded by the uh, ionophore from all directions and taken inside the cell or taken out of the cell. 
So, carrier and channel tag. To get more clarity, let us say on the carrier a kind of a uh, case, let us take cyclic iron force. One example is shown is for the valinomycin, another example is shown in this case is on the actin. So, see this valinomycin is nothing but natural cyclic iron force, cyclic peptide. Peptide because COnH, COnH. COnH. So, you have all this kind of thing. You have other linkers also, other linkers are also there. This is a cyclic peptide. Uh, okay. So, this is a natural uh, cyclic ino4 and this is very selective for the potassium. You see that how there are carbonyls. Though in this writing they all look towards inside, you see the crystal structure. In the crystal structure, only some of them, this one, the uh, after two more, then after, 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 after. So, only six have been protruded inside carbonyls. So, these protruded six carbonyls inside will form a core like an octahedral core and the metal ion is at the center. Now, you can see this is the metal ion, this is your valinomycin. So, this is a valinomycin complex and such a complex will go through the membrane straight away by concentration difference, uh, diffusion mechanism. So, concentration difference will also give result in the potential difference. So, therefore, this is kind of a thing, this you can call it as a carrier. There is another uh, molecule shown over uh, here, this one. So, this is a molecule of uh, the uh, calcium bound nonactin, you can see the structure over there, okay, here, and natural cyclic ino4, it complexes with the calcium 2 plus, and this molecule is shown over there. So, it is not exactly this way is formed, it is slump some uh, you know kind of a folding etcetera will come and finally, will fold like this. So, that it wraps around. So, ion and the peptide is or, or the molecule is wrapped, the ion and the molecule is wrapped. The top one is for potassium valinomycin, this the one below here is for calcium is a non actin. You can, both are carriers obviously. It is not only cyclic, you can also see some non cyclic examples. This is an example, perfect example for a non cyclic, and it is uh, the IO4 called its short name is monensin, commercial name is monensin. So, you can see some uh, ether like oxygens, hydroxyl oxygens, ether like oxygen, hydroxyl oxygens, and at the end carboxylic group. So, this if you see for the sodium, it is binding to all this. But there is a bit of opening here. In this part of it is exposed to the exposed to the environment. Okay. There is another molecule which is shown, calcium isin. Similarly, this also binds that. There is another example which is shown for lasallosin. This is for sodium. So such a open molecules when they bind to the ion, there is always a part of the uh, part of the region is exposed. And you know when it has to go to the membrane, what is membrane property? It is a, a polar, non-polar. So, if the ion is open, part of the ion, ion sphere is open, ion coordination sphere is open, what is that one? This is hydrophilic. So, therefore, hydrophilic part, how can it go through the membrane? There is no energy is also applied in this case. So, it is only a concentration difference. So, what it happens is two such molecules will join together. You see here, there is one molecule with one ion sodium there is another molecule with a sodium ion here. So, you can see centrosymmetry between them, this to this, this to this etcetera. So, a centrosymmetric pair of two ligands and two ions. So, now this is completely closed, this is not open, whereas this part is open. So, it has some hydrophilic region, this does not have hydrophilic. Therefore, this kind of a systems when you have a non cyclic systems, most often not necessarily 100 percent time, most often when there is an opening of the coordination sphere, it will dimerize and the dimer will pass through the membrane, not the bone one. Okay. In the other case, no dimer is required here, the valinomycin monomer itself, nonactin monomer itself, whereas uh, the monensin, lasallosin, monensin, all these kind of things, you have a uh, the dimer is formed. I hope you understand. Now, in the carrier, I have showed you two types, 
what is where the metal ion is completely sequestered by a cyclic ligand. So, therefore, the overall metal ion positive charge or the hydrophilic region is covered by the hydrophobic exterior, therefore, it can go through the membrane. The second case non cyclic aerophore, where the non cyclic aerophore you have uh, the uh, ligand wrapping around, but not 100 percent. There are certain region is open up. So, this region of the coordination sphere is uh, is a hydrophilic therefore this cannot go through a, a, a membrane because it is a uh, uh, hydrophobic therefore two such half kind of things join together and then go through as a dimer to the thing because the dimer is less exposed to the atmosphere or environment okay having understood the philosophy how these ions are uh, transported one is by carrier, other is by channel. Now, let us look at their affinities, how would you understand? At some stage I said this uh, uh, antibiotic is useful for potassium, this antibiotic for sodium, this for something else. How did we say that? How did we understand that? We said that because experiment shows that, but how do we understand? We have to, to understand that we have to study certain level of coordination chemistry of these ions and their transport properties. So, for that we can synthetically make a molecule of cyclic type, non-cyclic type and then study their affinity for monovalent ion, divalent ion and then look for their stability constants and compare with the literate, uh, compare with the natural ones, compare with the natural ones. So, our process goes in that direction. First we take simple uh, uh, cases which is called crowd ether. So, 12 crown 4, uh, crown 4 means there are 4 these oxygens are there and uh, 12 means there are total atoms periphery is 12, here total atoms are 18, oxygens are 6, total atoms are 24, oxygens are uh, 8. So, you have a 4 atom core, 6 atom core and 8 atom core. So, what are these? 12 crown uh, 4, 15 crown 5 which is not shown here, 18 crown 6, 21 crown 7. 24 crown 8, so many things are there. So many uh, kind of example. Now you can see their diameters going from around 1.3 to 2 to 2.8 to 3.8, something like that. So you can see that they are increasing the size of the thing. And coordination number is also increasing. There are 4 oxygen atoms, 5 oxygen atoms, 6 oxygen atoms, 7 oxygen atoms. Now, if you try to see among the ions which are uh, of importance from the alkali, alkaline earth, let us look at the alkali ions, lithium ion, sodium ion, potassium ion and rubidium ion. So, what is the diameter 1.38? Is that 1.38 is somewhere in between these two? Absolutely, 1.2 to 1.5 and is 1.94, 1.7 to 2.2 is what? It is somewhere in between. So, it is very nice fit, 2.66 is absolutely this, 2.94 somewhat bit looser, loose to this. So, you will not get a good. So, that means you are looking for a fit between the diameter of the macro cycle versus the diameter of the ion. So, there is a size fit. This is an ion pore, this is an ion size. So, this is a macro cycle, this is an ion. So, therefore, you can find a nice match, nice binding. So, lithium, 4 oxygens, absolutely perfect. Sodium with 5 oxygens will be good. Okay. Uh, and then potassium with 6 oxygens, perfect kind of thing. So, you can see that they have a uh, size, uh, size of the pore versus the size of the ion, have a perfect thing. In fact, these kind of a crown ethers are used for very selective uh, ion transport or ion reactions in organic synthesis they will use too as a phase transfer catalyst. They will do a little bit of exercise regarding their affinities, regarding their binding constants. Let us look at some binding constant. Okay, K s is the binding constant in the solvent whatever it is there log of this value. So, log 10 k value that means this whatever the value you have uh, on the decimal side you have to take anti logarithm and multiplied by 10 power 2, anti logarithm of uh, 0 8 multiplied by 10 power 4 like that. So, you know now you understand what is the k k value is the anti logarithm of this decimal point multiplied by 10 power of the on the matrix side. Okay, you take dicyclohexyl uh, 14 crown 4. We have seen a good fit for this is what 
A good fit for this is lithium and here what we are looking as the sodium. Sodium shows some uh, binding strength, potassium shows much less. Why? Because potassium ion is much more bigger than that of the sodium ion, it cannot fit at all. Sodium also cannot fit, but slightly it can interact. Now, instead of 14 crown 4, increase the size 18 crown 6. So, the size of the core is increased, the number of oxides are increased. Now, you see that this molecule will bind instead of 2.18, 4.08. That means 100 fold greater, 100 fold greater. So, the sodium plus is captured by dicyclohexyl 18 crown 6 to an extent of uh, 10 power 4 something. Uh, potassium is much more 10 power 6. So, so what do you say now? So, 10 power 4 versus 10 power 6, 100 fold difference. So, what do you say? It is this molecule has affinity to sodium, affinity to potassium, but selectivity is more towards the potassium because potassium is binding 100 times better than that is sodium. How 100 is coming? It is 10 power 6, this is 10 power 4. Of course, when you add water, if you take in water, all these things are taken in ethanol, if you take in water, uh, hydration, so every stability will go down. All these molecules, uh, all these ions do not uh, bind very, uh, give any stable binding. Now, come to another one, so on cyclohexyl, take benzo, so 18 ground 6, showing 4 point, let us say 4, this is showing 5. The difference is not as large as here, here is a 100 fold, here it is not that much, much less difference is there. Now, that is because you have changed from cyclohexyl to benzo. Okay? And you have not changed 18 crown 6 at all. So, therefore, it is not only the size of the uh, crown ether, not only the number of ligating sites, but also the, what is there outside. Okay? So, by benzo, you have a more pi system and you have only alkyl kind of a system that you have. So, therefore, hydrophobicities are also playing a role. So, therefore, hydrophobicity, hydrophilicity of the molecule, core size and the number of number of uh, ligatic centers, all these will play important. Now, go to the dimenzo 21 crown 6. Now, 21 crown 6 becomes too big for sodium. So, 4.4 it became 2.4, 100 times became weaker in binding. And whereas, the, it, for potassium also it is bigger, but the, it is weak by about 5 times or something, not even 10 times. Okay, so, that you understand by now dimenzo 30 crowns uh, 10 becomes much more bigger. So, all these becomes very weak. Sodium almost does not bind much at all, potassium will bind to much lower extent. Okay. So, similarly 18 crowns 6 for sodium 4.3 and potassium 6.1, 100 fold as I told you, in water is no important. Dioxo, this is like adding oxo groups outside, keto groups outside the 18 ground 6 periphery, then what you are doing? Hydrophilic. Here dicyclohexyl is hydrophobic, dibenzo, you have both hydrophobic, hydrophobic and van der Waal. and once you come to the dioxo, you have a hydrophilic, is a keto group, it will attract the water, therefore your binding strengths have gone down. Just compare this with 18 ground 6. 18 ground 6, 4.32. So, 26 dioxo 18 ground 6, 2.5. Similarly, this has fallen down. Okay? And let us not too much worry about these, this side of it. Then 14 dioxo 19 ground 6. So, what are we finding? Uh, the size of the core, the number of heteroatoms and the groups present outside, whether they are hydrophobic, hydrophilic, these all these play important role. That means, when the nature has synthesized all these antibiotics, it has taken an optimal of all these. Let us take another system, which is uh, referred as a cryptid system. Uh, the cryptid system is like this, two nitrogens connected by these ones. So, you can see 111, 211, that is the number that you have. Okay? Uh, 221, 222, etc. So, you have the oxygens, the oxygens are uh, coming from each strand. So, there is a strap between this nitrogen and nitrogen 1, there is a second strand, third strand. There are three strands are connecting between the two nitrogens. So, therefore, it is more or less three dimensionally arranged. 
with respect to this. So, therefore, it will wrap around the uh, any ion from all direction. So, this you can easily make out uh, from M and N. Okay. So, 2 to 2 it has a 6, 2 to 1 has got 2 plus 2 plus 1. So, that is 5 atoms etcetera. Okay. So, uh, so, these are the kinds of things. Now, having seen this, let us try to look at uh, this uh, one, this is 1, 1, 1 will have only uh, 3 uh, atoms, okay. 2, 1, 1 has got 2, 1, 1 will have 4 atoms, 2, 2, 1 has got 5 atoms, 2, 2, 2 has got 6 atoms, etc., etc. Now, let us look at these ones, this is not important. So, you take 2, 1, 1, there are 4 oxygen atoms in this. You see that lithium absolutely perfect, we have seen earlier when you have 4 atoms, and when you have a crown 4, it is perfect, it is giving very high binding. Then it will take the sodium, not so much fit and all others are not fit at all. Now, go to 2 to 1, now you have 5 atoms are surrounding, 5 oxygen atoms are there. Now, once you have the 5 oxygen atoms, the, the chain length is also increased. So, therefore, pore size increase, lithium becomes weak, lithium becomes loose rather. Lithium is now loose fit, not a uh, good fit, but whereas you go to the sodium, this becomes a strong fit. Here lithium is good fit, sodium is not fit, here is lithium is not fit, sodium is fit and potassium etc. is not fit. Now, go to the 2 to 2, then lithium is not fit, sodium is not fit, potassium is fit because 10 power 5. 3 to 2 that will have 3 plus 2 plus 2 that is called 7, 7 oxygen atoms, not only number of oxygen atoms, even the core size will also increase. Uh, no binding much, no binding much, no binding much, even potassium cannot bind, nothing. So, that means increasing the number of atoms to 8, 7 and so huge size is no use at all. Okay. So, say similarly 3, 3, 2, 3, 3, 2 means 3 plus 3 plus 2, that is 6 plus 2, 8, 8 atoms, almost nothing. So, now you can see the 2, 2, 1 is good for sodium, 2, 1, 1 is good for lithium, 2, 2, 2 is good for the uh, potassium. So, lithium, sodium, potassium. So, like a diagonal. Here 4 atoms, 5 atoms, 6 atoms. Okay. The ion, uh, the core size is smaller, little bigger, much bigger. So, now you can understand how this is really working. Similarly, one can see the di, uh, ca, ca, dionic or bivalent cation too. I mentioned to you earlier the changing the uh, the periphery with some hydrophobic etc will also influence this okay this is uh, the 37 which is over here 1 2 plus 3 5 6 7 8 kind of thing and this particular thing is showing uh, showing uh, 5.4 for sodium and uh, 5.7 for potassium and 3.8 for rubidium now, if you go to the next one, next one you have, this is only 3 and this is 5. So, you have increased. So, when you increase, this is uh, decreasing basically. You can see the values quite much the going down. So, on the other hand, if you take 2, 2, 2, which you have seen on the previous slide, it has a maximum at the potassium okay? and 2, 2, 1 will have. So, therefore, the size increase all these are uh, indeed affect a lot. Uh, so, let us see a case where we have only one benzene ring and there are cases two benzene rings. So, take one benzene ring here 2 2 2 B 2 2 2 2 B 2 B. See the potassium it does not change much, but barium it changes by three orders of magnitude almost. So, therefore, sodium to potas uh, potassium to barium ratio is become 1 here 1 is 200. So, you take instead of that C8, no oxygens at all, only all 8 are carbons. That means only 4 oxygens and nothing. Then the potassium will come down, barium will come much down, so it becomes potassium selective as compared to the barium. Now, instead you put 2 methyl groups, 1 methyl group here, 1 methyl group here, 2, 2, there is 3. So, that gives more or less similar for the potassium, but for the barium it is bigger because it is opened up and therefore, again it inverts the monovalent ratio for potassium to barium. So, these are some of the things which nature has, has uh, uh, um, basically balanced in order to get the trans, uh, in order to get specificity 
for the antibiotics that are being uh, naturally synthesized. Take an example, nonactin. For potassium 3.6, barium 1.7 and the ratio is 80. So, therefore, this can take mainly monovalent potassium, but not the barium ion in this case. So, now what we are trying to look at is that the, so the ion binding properties preferences are dependent on how many ligating centers are there, what is the core size of the molecule and whether the exterior is hydrophobic, hydrophilic, partially hydrophobic, partially hydrophilic and therefore, these all determine the, uh, the selectivity between the uh, sodium versus the uh, uh, among the among the monovalent cations between the among the monovalent versus divalent as shown in this particular case. You see that this is divalent 2 plus. So, k plus and 2 plus. So, therefore, this becomes almost nothing. So, this means this is more favored for barium, this is more favored for barium, this is neither good for anything, this is more favored for potassium, this is more favored for barium, this is more favored for potassium. So, the numerator greater value is for potassium, denominator greater value is for the barium divalent. So, that is how the nature has tried to adjust these things. We will continue with this ion transport in the next class with the uh, by take by looking into certain additional systems. Thank you very much.